Hello there, and welcome to another episode of... <laughs> News from the Gilding. Okay, so if you've joined my channel any time this year, you won't really have seen an episode like this before. So it's not going to be a book review today or any kind of book haul reveals but more looking at some paintings that I've been working on. So I do a bit of uh, painting in my spare time as a hobby. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna, there's gonna be a bit of rambling going on now. So if you just wanna go straight to the paintings, if that takes your fancy, then please do so. Down below there's timestamps. And if you would be interested in buying any of these, um, there's a link down below also for eBay, which is where I sell the devils. Um, they're pretty reasonably priced actually. There's free delivery as well to the UK. Um, elsewhere in the world, just contact me and I can do you a deal. Right, there's various reasons why I haven't been painting or showing videos of my painting this year. And that's because I've hardly done any. Um, last year I was doing it, well, I was doing it all the time, was I was doing a painting a week or so. Um, so there's various reasons. The first one being, um, I had a commission last year. Um, chap commissioned me three paintings. Um, I sent him two of them and he paid for, paid for those. But the third one, uh, I did over 20 hours of work on it and now he's ghosting me. <laughs> so that particular painting is good for no one because it was a very specific uh, commission and I'm not able to sell it and I'm not going to get any money for it. So that was a bit of a pain in the ass, so to speak. The other reasons, I suppose, the recent emergence of AI generated art kind of put me off a little bit. Uh, I became a bit annoyed about uh, the proliferation of AI generated art and its slightly dubious uh, connotations with copyright infringement and taking people's jobs, those kinds of things. I also thought, you know, I, I'm used to having, I have an idea and then it takes me perhaps, I don't know, 20 to 30 hours to realize a painting. Whereas with these AI art generators, uh, you can rustle up something within the space of five minutes. That's probably way better than anything I could do with my own two hands. So that's always a demoralizing thing to consider. Not that this is my bread and butter or anything. This has always just been a bit of money on the side. Um, I don't, uh, last year I sold maybe one or two paintings per month. This year I've sold nothing at all. And of course that's also to do with the current economic climate, the cost of living crisis and all of that. You don't want to buy a piece of art when you're struggling to buy some food. Of course, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that goes without saying. Um, so yeah, that's why I've, my output's been a bit slower than usual. But anyway, let's cut to the chase and I'll show you some stuff that's going on. The first ones I'll show you are going to be works in progress. So let's just pop them out. Um, and what I'll do is I'll show you some process um, where I can. So some of them I take photographs as I'm going along. That was not a bodily dysfunction. Uh, that was my um, slipper gracefully moving across the carpet. Okay. Um, so anyway, this is the first one. This is, well, a background of sorts, so completely abstract. I began with a, a very dark background and then used a palette knife to put this um, surface on. You can see the paint's applied quite thickly, has a nice texture, nice feel to it. But as an image, it doesn't really, I'm not that bothered about it personally. It reminds me of... I don't know, Japanese shrines, perhaps, the red shrines. I don't know. Um, but anyway, yeah, this is going to be a background for another painting of no no idea what yet. It's just a background for now. Oh, we've got another one here of a similar nature. This is something I just did off the hoof and made it up as I went along. Apologies, my camera is absolutely crap. Uh, I spent all morning trying to set up my mobile phone as a camera and it didn't work. <laughs> but anyway, so this is a doodle really. I just made it up as I went along. And therefore, this central um, shape is slightly off centre, which is a bit annoying. You can probably see that. 
Uh, so I'm not sure if I'll put something over the top or I'll just put it in the bin. <laughs> okay, the f uh, I've got another one. Oh, no, I'll do this one first. So this other one I'm going to show you, I've spent a very long time on now and it's purely for my own titillation, shall we say. I bought um, an antique frame uh, for about five years ago and I've been meaning to do a painting for it ever since. So this is the one that's going to go in it. Now, I've had to censor it because the young lady here is currently unclothed in that area and I'm going to remedy that by putting various uh, foliage um, in that region. But um, yeah, I was hoping to get this done for May Day. Uh, we've got the Maypole there. Um, and yeah, so what, what needs to be done, obviously I've got to put flesh on her bones. And there's going to be a very detailed uh, piece of painting in the foreground, various foliage, uh, weeds perhaps, but maybe some flowers as well. Ones that reference uh, the springtime. But yeah, anyway, this one's called Maypole. Um, I, I came up with this composition about two years ago and I only just got round to painting it. But um, it really, it's been really relaxing uh, painting this one, if but slightly tricky. Anyway, let's go on. Um, we've got one more that's a work in progress and here it is on the top of my homemade drying rack. So this one here. So any regular viewers will know that I've recently I've been working more from just doing random paintings, very quick ones, and then developing them over the top. Um, I'm going to probably put some um, higher definition images up so because my camera is so terrible. But yeah, this one looks like it could be a kind of a science fiction or, or, or fantasy based composition. Uh, so if I go to the, I'll show you a bit of process now. All right, so here we go. This is the first, this is what I did initially. So this one, the colors were actually picked randomly by what I had left on my palette from painting Maypole, actually. Uh, so we've got some blue that I used for the sky, some greens for the foliage. Not sure where the red came from. Yeah, one of the ribbons in the Maypole, perhaps. Uh, but anyway, there we are, just slapped it on and it automatically had a kind of almost architectural feel about it. So a light source and some suggestions of structure. Uh, the only other thing I've done over the top so this is the second one, not a great deal, but you can see I've put a light source um, to the left there. So it's like a beam coming down and I've done a similar thing, tidying up the main light source with a few highlights elsewhere. The next stage for this one will be putting a lot more detail onto the structure, um, getting lots of little bits and pieces just to give it some depth, increase the sense of depth. Uh, but there, anyway, that's a work in progress this devil away uh, right okay so right the, the rest of these the next four are finished I think uh, although this one that I'm going to show you next I'm not really happy with which often means it's not actually fin finished but here we are it's it's a very odd abstract one um, I won't put this up for too long because it's terrible it looks terrible under the under the camera so let's bring up a high definition image of it and um, so again this began with a random daubing of paint uh, which then resembled a structure of sorts so I started working this heavily uh, so I went through about four different processes uh, which I'll show you now okay here we go so this, I almost forgot to take a photograph before applying the detail. You can see up in this area, I've already started to start picking out some shapes. But this is the image that was left after the initial painting, the first abstract daubing. Again, I've, you can probably see the marks. I've used a palette knife to slap the paint on and then take it back off again. Lots of various shapes and even uh, light sources have been generated from that. So the first pass was this. So basically I'm just applying a darker colour just to pick out some of the shapes. There we are. Hmm. 
and then the next phase was darkening it further and putting some detail over those shapes and then finally this is where it is now I've kind of blocked in the the top of the painting just to give the eye somewhere to go so through between these two structures I don't think it's particularly successful as a composition but again working from something I can't control results in something like this it has merit uh, there's interest there I think but perhaps not complete um, I may have to rethink this one uh, but there we are um, yeah food for thought something I may have to work on again okay back in the box you go you devil there we go okay the next one is this um, so this is a very distinctly science fiction inspired image uh, again something that I completely made up on the hoof or yeah it's on the hoof yeah again let's pop up a better a clearer image for you there um, so again once again started with a completely abstract background let it dry and then I mixed up a very dark color and started carving into that background using the underlying structure so if I switch to the other view I'll show you what I did so I've only got two images for this one um, but this so again I almost forgot to do the photograph so I've already put a, a black line in there but you might be able to work out some of the structure that I went for if I flip between the two just slowly again I've had to largely make it up as I go along because there wasn't a, an awful lot to go on but so this structure here became this uh, this complicated bit here it's clear is this image isn't that clear but it actually expressed this in my mind anyway so that's where that bit went this bit again there's a structure here that I thought would be floating in this this space here and then then I just went for the uniform so there is a kind of a brush marks brush marks that are going from right to left on the diagonal so I, I preserved that in the final uh, image um, yeah what do you think of that um, it reminds me of a kind of a retro uh, science fiction uh, book cover I would say um, yeah anyway there we are there's that one back in you go your vile beast uh, right two more to go uh, right I'll save that one for last so I'll go with this one because I haven't got any other process images for it uh, right it goes that way up okay this is another one yet another one that was derived from an abstract background let's pop up a better image up there so yeah I this this canvas has been kicking around for a long time this um, pink and blue uh, number and I never knew what to do over the top of it it was there was just enough detail there to be distracting um, and too much detail for it to function as a background for another painting so yeah it's just, just kicking around literally just kicking the devil occasionally and then I just thought right let's just do the usual let's see what we can see and start carving into it I'm quite often uh, influenced by distant memories of um, H.R. Geiger's work because I've got a number of his uh, books in my possession and it's it's quite common for me to uh, subconsciously pick up on some of these uh, old images and this one I think is derived from this image here by H.R. Geiger um, this is like a bathtub thing so I think what I've done is I've maybe looked into that uh, in inside the noggin perhaps um, but the the canvas itself the underlying image did suggest that it wanted to be this shape I was going to say anyway okay there's that one okay the last one I've got to show you is another one that resembles a H.R. Geiger composition or image shall we say um, and I've got some process for this so you can see where this came from I think it goes this way up but you never know um, you might be able to see the paint applied quite thickly in areas and again it was working from an abstract background and carving heavily into it with the black 
which is actually um, phalo blue and brown. And then the last thing, because it was looking terrible, I, I put all these green highlights over the top. But I'll show you the uh, process um, next, if you wish. OK, here we go. This is how it began, that particular painting. This one was done, again, this one, this canvas has been kicking around for perhaps two years. I had no idea what to do with it because the paint was on layered so thickly that it really limited what I would put over the top because you would see through those different depths of paint. So yeah, I began the usual thing. You can see I've already made a start there. So I carved that out of that base line. Look at that. So I'll do it slowly. You might be able to see where I've picked out these shapes. Do it a bit quicker. There we go. Is that nice? <laughs> Um, and at this point I just wasn't happy with it at all. Um, so then I started chipping away at it a bit more. I didn't like this composition. It was too... I liked this side, the left side. It had a kind of intimacy. Um, it was uh, closer. Uh, not quite sure how to um, describe it. But this side was trying to do the same thing, but it, it left nowhere for the eye to go except through the middle. Um, I was going to put like a light source in the background, perhaps. Yeah, but I didn't do that. So I decided to chip. No, oh, that was the final one. <laughs> OK, but there is quite a bit of difference between even those two. So if you see down here, this strange structure actually looked a bit Egyptian at this point. Um, so I got rid of that and actually stylized this a bit more, gave it a bit more um, structure. Um, it was also it was also looking a bit like a dog. I don't like things looking like things. If I'm going for abstract, I want it completely different. Um, and then, so the last stroke was to put these light sources in, which was just a very vibrant green, similar to the one I've used in the uh, for the highlights of the foliage in Maypole. Um, so that's another interesting thing. I'm quite influenced by paintings that I'm currently working on. Uh, both in terms of uh, content and and colour as well, so that's that's an interesting thing uh, for me at least. Um, so yeah, this gave a bit more interest to this. These areas livened them up a bit more, um, so it becomes something that could be organic, but also uh, man-made as well, I suppose. Uh, yeah, maybe who knows? Who knows? Um, there we are. So that's how that one. Um, was birthed, shall we say. I think that's all. Yeah, that's all I've got. Okay, so there we are. That's all I've done um, this year, although th those paintings were predominantly done during February, I think. February in and into March. Uh, for the past month, I've done none at all because I've set myself a different target. I've been writing again um, and I thought to myself it would be nice to try and write a book in a month. Uh, to see if it was possible. Uh, I failed, but I did quite well in, in, I think, anyway. The first draft is over 50,000 words, and I did that in a month. The previous books I've written, the first one I did would, took me four years. The second book took me two years. Uh, what else? The Dark Matter, the short stories, that took me a year. So I was... I was, I was trying to really shorten it even further. Of course, the rounds of editing will add more months to it, but it was really exciting actually to, to work on a book uh, in that fashion and not worry so much about what I was writing, the quality of the writing as I was going. So a really nice new way of working for me. Uh, it's, it's going to be a fantasy adventure, but a very humorous one, I hope. Uh, well, my type of humour anyway. It won't be for everyone's um, liking, but I've enjoyed doing it. And it's a nice bit of escapism for me at the very least. Also, there's the idea that I'm not having, I'm not investing too much into it. So I'm not so disappointed when the book doesn't sell as it in inevitably never does sell very well. But that's beside the point. I'm still enjoying doing it. Anyway, let's end it there. Uh, there will be a book review next week. I've also got an absolutely massive book haul of 60 books that have come in a single parcel. Uh, now, if anyone's watched to this point and you're interested in these, the books that I do, the book hauls, would you like me to do them all in one go? 
or shall I parcel it off and do the usual sniff routine? Because there's no way in hell I'm going to be able to sniff 60 books in one go and not perish. So yeah, I'll put that to you. I might do a poll maybe and see if anyone wants one or the other. Anyway, let's leave it there. Thank you for watching. If you want to buy any of those, let me know and I'll do you a deal. I'll knock some more off the top. Why not? Anyway, let's leave it there. Thanks for watching and cheerio. Mm -hmm. <laughs>